Continuing on with chapter four and various forecasting techniques, now we are going to move into trend projections using the least squares technique. Up to this point, we've talked about moving averages, weighted moving averages, um, we've done exponential smoothing, and all of those methods look at more of the near term type of time periods. With the next couple examples between uh, least squares and regression analysis, we're going to be looking at projections that are more in the future, so longer term type of forecasts. Um, least squares can be done in Microsoft Excel, which I'll show you towards the end of this lecture recording. But right now we're going to walk about we're going to walk through how to do it manually together to calculate out what we believe a future forecast will be out in, in the future in future periods. So a trend projection, Okay, a trend projection is a time series forecasting method that fits a trend line to a series of historical data points and then projects that line into future forecasts. Linear trends can be found using the least squares technique, and that's what we're going to use for this lecture recording. y hat equals a plus bx, that's the formula for the least squares technique, and this is where y hat computed value of the variable to be the predicted or dependent variable. The A is your y-axis intercept, your B is the slope of the regression line, and your X is the independent variable. And for the least squares technique, it's going to be time. For regression analysis that we go over next, your independent variable can be something other than time. But for this type of forecasting method, uh, using least squares, your independent variable is going to be time. When we look at what the least squares method looks like, um, plot it out. It minimizes the sum of the squared errors, or those deviations, and it puts them into a trend line. So you can see on the far left, those are the values of the dependent variable and on the bottom is your time period, and the blue line in the middle is your trend line. So you can see that even though there's a deviation for period one, it goes up, and then there's a deviation for period two, and then it's down. So these are your Ys, these are your actual observations. When you take the average of them, there is a trend, and that trend is going upward in this case. So there is a linear upward trend for this example, and that's because it's minimizing the sum of the errors squared. For the least squares requirements, there's a, there's a couple we need to take into consideration. You will always want to plot the data to ensure that there's a linear relationship. So after you've got your data, most of which will be given to you, you plot it out to make sure that there is a linear relationship that's either going up or that it's you know, going down, but either way there is some kind of trend. With least squares, we do not want to try and predict time periods too far outside of the database. So in the example you're going to see right now, you're going to get seven years worth of data, and we're going to predict what does the eighth year look like. You could also look at the ninth year or the tenth year. Those are close enough to follow that trend line. You don't want to try and predict year 25 or year 30. That's too far away. So this works for future time periods within reason. And then the last assumption or requirement is that deviations around the least squares, squares line are assumed to be random. Okay, they're assumed to be random. So you're going to see some deviations. You assume they're random because that trend line, um, you're going to follow that trend line, which is uh, a bunch of averages. Okay, so to do our trend projections, statisticians have developed equations that we can use to find the values of A and B for any regression line. So A is your y-axis intercept, and B is the slope of the regression line. The slope, which is B, and the y-intercept A can be calculated with the following equation. And they look scary, but don't, don't let them scare you. It's, we're going to work through what all of those different uh, symbols mean. We'll work through it together, and you will, you'll be able to calculate your slope uh, or your y-intercept uh, given these two formulas. So B is the slope of the regression line. X is the known values of the independent variable. Y is the known values of the dependent variable. Your x bar is the average of the x values. Your y bar is the average of the y values. Your n is the number of data points or observations. And your a is your y axis intercept. And we can express the line with the equation of y hat 
equals a plus b x. Okay, so these are some useful formulas to have handy. Uh, you will be asked to either calculate the slope or the y-intercept or a, a, uh, make a forecast in future time. So let's do an example. This is our least squares example. The demand for electric power at New York Edison over the past seven years is shown in the following table in megawatts. The firm wants to forecast next year's demand by fitting a straight line trend to, to this data. So you can see there are seven years worth of data and then the output or the electrical power demand in megawatts. And you can see it goes from 74 to 79, 80, 90, 105. And for the most part, that trend is definitely going up. There's a little bit of an outlier here between years six and seven. There's some deviation. So that might be one of those outliers that we, that we keep in mind going forward. So we've got our data. So now let's calculate out. There's various different steps we need to do. Our X and our Y were given to us, so we know what our time periods are, and we know what our electrical power demand was. So step one is we need to determine how many ends there are, how many years or periods are there. In this case, there are seven years, so there are seven periods, so our N equals seven. Next, we're going to take the sum of all of the X's. Okay, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. If you add all of those up, you get to 28. Then, to get your x bar, you take 28, which is the sum of your x's, and you divide by your n. And that's going to give you an x bar of 4. Next, you've got your electrical power, which is your, your y variable, your y. So now we're going to calculate our y bar, which is the average of the y values. So you're going to take 74 plus 79 plus 80 plus 90. And when you take the sum of all of those, you get to 692. 692 divided by your n of 7 gives you a y bar of 98.86. So you've calculated now your n of 7, your x bar of 4, and your y bar of 98.86. Now we're going to calculate our x squared. So all you're going to do is take your time period, and in this case you're going to square it. So 1 squared gives you 1. 2 squared gives you 2. Sorry, 2 squared gives you 4. 3 squared gives you 9. 4 squared gives you 16, and you work your way down all the way to 7 squared, which gives you 49. And when you take the sum of all of your x squared, you get 140. Now we're going to calculate our xy. Our xy is simply taking 1 multiplied by 74, and that gives you 74. Then you take your next time period, which is 2 multiplied by 79, and that gives you 158. And once again, you work yourself all the way down, taking the sum of x, y, and that gives you 3,063. Okay, 3,063. That's your sum of the x, y. So now we have all of the data points we need to calculate the slope. Okay, so let's calculate our slope. Remember that big formula we saw on a slide or two uh, ago? Now you can plug it all in. You've got your sum of the x, y, which is 3,063. You've got your n, which is 7. You've got your x bar, which is 4. You've got your y bar, which is 98.86. You divide that by the sum of x squared, which is 140. You've got your time period, which is 7. And you've got your x bar squared, which is 4 squared. And when you do this calculation, you get to 10.54. So the slope of your line, your B, is 10.54. Now let's calculate our A. So our A, you already have all that data now as well. You've got your Y hat, or your Y bar, of 98.86, minus the slope, which you just calculated, which is B, which is 10.54. And then you've got your 4 here, which is your x bar. Okay, your x bar is 4. So that gives you 
56 or equals 56.70. So your trend line, your trend line is now y hat equals a plus bx, and your a is 56.70. You just calculated that out in the step above. You calculated 56.70 plus b, which is your slope of 10.54 and then x, and x is the unknown variable at this point. For this question, if we go uh, back a slide, New York Edison wants to know what they should forecast for demand in year eight, okay, year eight. So they've given us seven years worth of data or seven periods worth of data, and they wanna calculate what's next year's forecast going to look like, and they're doing so with the least squares method. So we have everything we need now, We've got our trend line calculated out. Our y hat plus a plus bx is 56.70 plus 10.54 and our x. And in this example, our x is going to be eight. So after you've calculated your b and you've calculated your a, you can sub in the year that you're trying to solve for. And in this example, it's year number eight. And so when you plug in eight, 8 multiplied by 10.54 is going to put you around 82, 83, and when you add that with 56.70, your forecast for year 8 is 141 as the electrical power um, megawatts demand uh, for year 8. So you can see it does follow that trend pretty nicely for year 8, puts you right at about 141. Year 9, if you were to follow this trend line, year 9 looks to be about 150. So that is a, a good linear trend. It appears to have a strong relationship between time and demand. Yes, there's a little bit of an outlier in year six, but we would reevaluate after year eight to make sure that it was just an outlier. But using the least squares example, this is a nice linear trend. So now I'm gonna walk you through very quickly how you can do this in Microsoft Excel. Uh, so you, for your homework or um, um, you know, when, you, when you're working on these in your career, you can use Microsoft Excel. For your quizzes and your exams, you're gonna to have to be able to calculate the slope and the y-axis or your a manually. So you're gonna to have to be able to calculate everything that we've done up to this point manually, but I do wanna show you how to do it in Microsoft Excel as well. All right, here we are. I've taken the data and I've put it into Microsoft Excel. We've got our New York Edison demand for electric power. We've got the years, so seven years. That is our X, so the time period is our X. Power demand is our Y, so we uh, put all of the data that was given to us in this example uh, into Microsoft Excel. I've already done that. Now you just highlight your X and your Y, and you make a scatter diagram. So you can press that button to make a scatter diagram, and it plots out the data. So here is all of the data. You can add the data labels. So you can see year one at 74, year two at 79. Here is everything that you saw. It follows a linear trend, but let's also add a trend line. So you just click add trend line. Uh, you cannot see it on the screen. Now you can. Uh, on the far right, this screen pops up. It says format the trend line. I've already done a linear um, uh, chart. But I'm also going to click on the buttons down below that say display equation on the chart and display the R squared value on the chart. So you can see on the very bottom of the screen, I'm clicking display equation on the chart and display the R squared value on the chart. So now what it has done for me automatically <clears throat> is there is our Y hat. That's our trend line that we manually calculated on the last couple slides together. You've got your, um, so there's your trend line, y equals 10.536x, so that's where you would add 8 or 9 or 10 or whatever you're trying to calculate, plus 56.71. So 56.714, and um, that is your trend line. And you could very quickly, like I just did, add that into Microsoft Excel. That'll give you your trend line. You could then manually add in whatever years you're trying to calculate for, and you are done. And then you've done the least squares method of uh, doing forecasting for future periods. Um, you can see that I added the R squared and that equals 0.8. We will go over what the R squared and the R means uh, in the next lecture recording where we talk about 
um, regression analysis, and the correlation or strength of a forecast. So this one actually has a very strong forecast, and again, we'll go over that in a little bit uh, in, in future uh, videos. Okay, and you are now done with the least squares forecasting technique.